live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Informatica World 2019. Brought to you by Informatica. Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage of Informatica World 2019 here in Sin City, Nevada. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, John Furrier. We have two guests for this segment. We have Pink Rose Hamilton. She is the VP Business Intelligence at Hackensack Meridian Health. Thanks for coming on the Thank show. you for having me. And we have Andy Crago. He is a managing consultant at Info Verity. Thanks so much, Andy. Thanks for having me. So, tell us a little bit about this, this partnership between Hackensack uh, and, and Info Verity. Um, well, we were looking for an implementation partner. We, we were looking for the skills to come in and help us really um, implement MDM specifically. Uh, we're also implementing a few other technologies that we could probably speak about, but that's how we got connected. So tell us a little bit about what life was like before MDM. What were, what were sort of the obstacles, the challenges that you were wrestling with? So Hackensack Meridian Health is the largest health system in New Jersey. And we are a very fast growing, uh, we like to consider ourselves disruptive um, health um, industry in New Jersey. And so because of that, we were uh, growing and acquiring mergers, mergers, acquisitions, and many different EMRs, many different um, physician uh, credentialing systems were involved in this. So we had to make a decision of, do we wait till we're all on one system, which we all know will never happen, or never happen in time sometimes. So we decided to do the MDM approach, which made the most sense to us. One of the things that's interesting, we talk, we go to hundreds of events, we go to talk to a lot of experts and practitioners, and everyone buys into cloud at some level. If you're cloud native, startup certainly born in the cloud, great benefits. Data is critical, because in SaaS, data is great if you have it, because you can feed machine learning, you can be, take more risk, be agile, and more risk, more reward. And the apps, and it's all good, right? On, on the enterprise side, on premises, legacy kind of kicks in. If data can't feed machine learning or can't feed the app, AI really can't be enabled. This becomes a key challenge in the industry. How do you guys look at that? Because as you lay out, it's not a simple answer, go to the cloud, just do on-prem. You got to think about an architecture. What are you guys um, doing with, the, with respect to where the data is stored? How do you think about it? What's some advice and uh, best practice can you share? Well, I consider data storage being more like um, a house you're living in, right? So we buy our starter homes and we start our families. And then we outgrow this house. And then we have to say, okay, I need a bigger house and we start growing. And so data's run pretty much the same way. We start outgrowing our on-prem houses and so now we're moving out and we're moving to bigger and better things, which is the cloud. And so I think hybrid is where we start, right? We can't start with, okay, everybody move out and move into this new house. It's let's go build this new house somewhere else. Let's test it out and see if we like it. Um, so yeah. that's my thought so you process got, you around got the addition. Mm -hmm. That's got to work with all the plumbing, right? right? So it's the same thing. And then you got more track homes and you got electronic cars that go in between uh, exactly. automation. So <laughs> this is more of a systems view. Take care of the operational piece. Absolutely. Then think about developer angle. What's the, how does that architecture look? So in terms of you know, what we're trying to do right now, I mean, it has to be kind of short-term vision with kind of a larger scale architecture. So you know, as Pink was saying, in terms of the, the hybrid architecture, if we are able to develop reusable cleanse functions such as kind of the address doctor functionality where you know, we're reaching out to a third party service, bringing in you know, more enriched information. We have that in an on-prem model right now, but in the future, you know, that configuration and work will easily transition into that cloud architecture. So we're trying to keep our eye on the future and make sure that things are reusable um, as we move forward. So. And how do you two work together? I mean, this is such an interesting, I mean, in, this, in this age of co-opetition, and you're not necessarily competitors, of course, but how do you work together to come up with the right solutions? I mean, what does that look like, the partnership? Well, we totally hate each other. That's right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is the first we've talked in a while. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, the, the partnership, I think, we hit it off right from the beginning. Um, it was just a matter of 
you know, when we acquire new technologies and that decision of how much time and effort is it going to take for me to train my team and to identify the right folks on my team and what work am I going to take away from them in order to give them this additional work and this learning curve that needs to go into place. Um, so I think we have to augment our teams with experts like InfraVerity to come in and say, you know, this is how this tool functions and sometimes we bring in the technologies and we kind of just crack it open but we don't don't really get the full um, use of it to understand you know, exactly every bell and whistle we can take advantage of. And these guys are the experts that help us do that. And it's always a challenge. I mean, I, I think data's been center of the value project for many, many years. It's kind of mainstream now, and you can't look with the headlines these days without hearing. For one year anniversary of GDPR, privacy, so we, there's always been that risk management, mm -hmm. compliance stuff that's been around, certainly you guys know that. But every day there's a new thing. Oh, if you've got cloud, you've got geo regions, you're in this country, you're in this, that country. So as more regulatory kind of things kind of creep over, who knows, maybe blockchain's out there. So again, <laughs> all these things are circling around complexity, mm -hmm. which constrains data, not necessarily frees it so much. Well, maybe build software. So how does Informatica and customer deal with this because I'd imagine you'd have to build an abstraction layer, has to be some tooling around it, monitoring. Yep. What's your take on this complexity? So in terms of like an architecture perspective, you know, we, we consolidated all of the, the different uh, kind of silos of patient data into a centralized repository. And historically, you know, you would build kind of a lot of point-to-point -point feeds based on a certain application. We'd build some custom work and we would ship them off some data. But really what we want to do is be able to master once and, and publish to a canonical model that's more of self-service and hub and spoke. So as uh, consumers and customers of the data need to come and get it, they can come to a centralized place. We can augment uh, what data is available there um, and kind of scale that with the ar architecture across real-time capabilities, cloud, um, and other uh, use cases that we come across. Do you feel good? Data's frictionless, it's out there, it's addressable. In terms of the vision that we're on, so I mean, it's you know, it's a it's a couple <laughs> steps at a time, but it's in terms of the, the journey in the and, and the and set of tools that we have, that's definitely what where we're going. So, I want to ask you about the skills gap. One of the things that has emerged is that in the healthcare industry, it is a, it is much more evolved in the sense of that they there's an understanding of how to work with data, and it's perhaps because you've just always worked with more data than say a retail company or a consumer product company. So. First of all, how big a problem is this for Hackensack Meridian Health? Is it as bad as the headlines uh, <laughs> suggest? And also, what are you doing to combat it? So our main goal is to take care of the patient, right? <clears throat> and so when, when a patient is introduced to our system, we want to be able to take care of that patient and their family members in the best possible way that we can. So if we're working with a very disparate um, organization where we're on multiple EMRs specifically, it's hard for us to identify that episode of care for that patient. So the, the MDM piece particularly uh, with the patient domain allows us to do that. It allows us to, to view the entire episode of care for that patient to see, you know, you went to these doctor's offices, you had these things done, you went to this lab, you had these tests done, you went to the hospital, you had this procedure, and this is what your follow-up looked like. So from, and, and we're also conscious of the patient's expense in all of this, as well as, you know, what, what are, what's the provider's expense, what is the, the um, payer's expense, so you want to make it cost effective, you want to make it um, accessible, so that are there services that that a certain zip code or patient population needs that, that we're not providing, that we, we can provide. And so this is the whole entire continuity of care, to take care of our patients the best way we can. My daughter just graduated college uh, this week in Cal. First ever data analysis college class, inaugural oh. class, so shows how early it is. You know, Cal's great school, been doing data for a while. Data is a huge opportunity whether it's women in tech, new service area comes up, whether you don't need to be a hardcore programmer to get into the data business, but there's certain patterns we're seeing emerge that you don't have to have a certain degree because the jobs that are open, there's no degree for it. There's only the first class that's graduated from Berkeley. <laughs> so I got to ask you for folks in high school or parents out there or anyone looking to reskill, what specific foundational and or advanced skill sets should people be get looking at if they really want to get into data? And it could be anything. So what, love to get your take on what you think those skills are for people out there that if they want to learn something new and ride the wave. So I'll start a little bit. I think a lot of people get really technical with data, but I think you really have to understand data within business context. I mean, yes. if you're looking at a physician record, mm -hmm. understanding the type of physician, maybe where the care was administered, you have to really think about, okay, 
what am I trying to solve? What pain point am I looking at? So it's not about you know, relational databases and writing SQL. You really have to understand the functional purpose of data within the business problem that you're well, considering. Certainly machine learning is hot. The nerds go there, the geeks go there, but yep. there's a bigger picture than just coding exactly. and... There's a whole data strategy that you need to consider and, and kind of plug and play as you go along and really understanding you know, the data within the business context is key. I'm so glad you asked that question because I'm going to give a, a different viewpoint from this. I have a daughter who's a junior in high school and um, she's preparing her career path and, and so she wants to follow mom's career path and wants to do data science and so it's very exciting for me. You know, you know I'm like actually a role model which you, know, you don't never expect your children to think of you as one. Congratulations. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, she, P picked up a few uh, SQL classes early on in high school, and I think the the underlining foundation of coding is probably a little bit important to just uh, to to get that piece of it, because when you're leading the function and definitely knowing the the business knowledge, um, when we start any project, we go in and we start with discovery, right? What is it that you do? How do you do it? What are your workflows? What do they look like? So that's definitely key. But adding in that technical piece, you know, makes you that perfect data science human um, that I would look for as an employer. <laughs> it's certainly evolving. There's no one yet playbook because there's so many diverse opportunities to yes. dig in from visualization to ethics to coding to business value. Unbelievable. Yeah. Great. Well, Pink and Andy, thank you both so much for coming on the show. Thank you so Lots much. Lots of for great advice us. for newly minted graduates. That's right. Yes. Thank you. I'm Rebecca Knight for John Furrier. You are watching theCUBE. <laughs>